love coach. Let's find out if you're ready for love. Here's your marvelous host, Nikki Lee. Hello, and welcome to Ready for Love Radio. This is your host and love coach, Nikki Lee. Today, I want to talk about something that is an interesting take on something, and I've got a great person here with me to talk about this. I've got Heather Montgomery, the founder and CEO of PleaseMe.com. And when I tell you the topic, you might be kind of surprised that Heather's here with me. So, so Heather, it's great to have you with me. Hi, Nikki. Thank you so much. It's great to be with you. You know what? We, we talked about this, and I think it's a topic that people are going to go, do what? <laughs> so, mm-hmm. Yep. I, I think they are. But we're going to talk about, are are values sexy? And I think they are. What do you think? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, if we think about what we like and what we're attracted to in another person, it's usually the courage and what they stand for and what they stand up for and who they are as a human being, hopefully, right? Are they inspiring us? You know, do we feel good around them? And I think a huge part of that is values in in many areas, but especially, you know, what are your core beliefs or values as it pertains to sex and sexuality? Because, you know, a partner is somebody that you're going to be going into that with. So good to know their core values. Um, You need to trust that person. Exactly. And it's it's interesting. One, One of the things with Dr. Ava was, you know, who... Who is deserving of you? Mm. You know that you you share yourself, your body, your intimacy with, and yeah. I, I love that. The first time I saw that, I'm like, ooh, you know, because mm-hmm. when you're trusting a person with your vulnerability, because I mean, when you really, really give yourself to somebody, you're being very vulnerable. Yeah, and especially when you're very intimate with a person. You're making yourself the most vulnerable you really ever are. Yeah. And you don't want to do that with just anybody because you're putting yourself in a not so safe situation with just any person. You know, well, I I don't, but you know. <laughs> no. But so you you want to know the the person and like you said, what they stand for, what they believe, you know that kind of thing. So I values. I think values have gotten a bad rap over the last yeah. whatever. You know, I I mention values to some people and they look at me like, oh goodness, where's she going now? You know, but values kit values. I just don't think are a bad thing. They just aren't. It's good. You know, you you need to stand for something. You need to believe in something. And it seems too many people, I mean, they may be gung-ho to jump into something that's, you know, like the the flavor of the week kind of thing, but they don't really, it's like they don't really understand why. They don't know why they're jumping in. It's just the popular thing to do. Somebody told them to do it. Well, that's uh, true, true. You know, but do you, well, okay. And, and they told them if they didn't do it, we'll cancel you. There you go. There you go. There you go. Or mm-hmm. if you ask them why they are, they can't defend their, why they're doing it. No, That's because my they thing. didn't choose to do it, really. They did it because somebody else told them to do it. And if they didn't do it, they had more to fear than to gain. Right, right. So how do, you, is, how, do you def- how do you defend that? Yeah, my thing is um, I don't. I'm, I'm a coward. Can, <laughs> true. That's how you defend that. <laughs> true. Yeah. True. Mm-hmm. My thing is, I don't, I don't have to agree with you, yeah. you know, but at least be able to argue your point. I, I should have been yeah. in, in debate, debate in high school. I really should have, you know, but mm-hmm. at least be able to defend what you think and defend yeah. it against my point of view. If you can't do that and all you're going to do is give me like the talking points that everybody else on the planet knows too, that's mm-hmm. useless. You know, defend it yeah. from, you know, be able to stand up for yourself. So, yeah. And if you can't. And your, and your beliefs. Yeah. If you can't, yeah. sit down and be quiet. 
<laughs> so. Right. My grandmother always said, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. And I think we could modify that a little bit with, if you don't have anything defensible to say, <laughs> don't say there anything you go. at all. You there know, you go. I mean, I love and value somebody that has an opinion. I have always yeah. loved and valued other opinions um, because they have something to teach me, right? Yes. Yeah. It's a different perspective and it's, like, wow, that person went through all these things, and this is where they come from, right? This is their come from. This is where they've gotten to. This is where they're at. And right. that's a beautiful thing. We're each individual is unique, and we have our own journeys. And when we get to hear other people's journeys, we can be inspired. We can be sad. We can be hopeful. We can be compassionate. We can be all these feelings, right? And right. Um, when there is not anybody there on the other side holding and regarding something as important or worth fighting for um, or the usefulness to, to, to defend it, then, then what do they do? What are they standing for? Right. Well, and too yeah. many people don't seem to be standing for anything much. I think we have a lot of fear going on. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the fear can be crippling for, for people and, especially when they're feeling like, I don't know what to do. Right. But see, when, when I get really concerned about something, I dig in and start researching to figure basically what the hell's going on yep. so, that, so that I know what I need to do. Right. And what, just basically what needs to be done. You know, what... Based on it, your values. Yeah, and and what can be done? Because sometimes there's only so much you can do based on the mm-hmm. situation. But you know what? What can I do? How far can I go to protect myself and prepare for what's coming? Mm-hmm. And and what can't I do? You know what? What's just simply out of my control? But what right. can I do? And what? At what point do I need to stop worrying? Because there is nothing else I can do. You know, because well, there's I, no sense in worrying about things yeah. you can't control. Oh, yeah. Worrying is a useless emotion. Um, but I think what one important thing I would add to that is mm-hmm. that what can I do to create the outcome I would like to see happen? There you go. Right? Without that next, you know, what is the goal, right? So right. you're doing the research and you're looking at, number one, being prepared. I mean, what does that right. mean? Um, what, what is ideal? Okay, what, if, what, is, what is just going to get me by versus what would I re- really rather see happen because I can thrive there? Right, right. Um, and how much courage and bravery do I have to say that's what I stand for and that's what I'm going to mm-hmm. make my goal um, and find the things I can do to support it? Yeah. <laughs> you basically just summed up a new website that me and a friend are putting together in a nutshell, that's beautiful. I love that. <laughs> so, oh, wonderful! I'm happy is, to be of assistance. That is so great. I'll have to I'll have to clip that out when I do the editing. I I'll tell you about that after the show. But I I will be announcing that when it's it's more put together. But it's it's not far enough along to announce just yet. But yeah, you basically yeah. just summed up a, a website I'm working on. <laughs> so, yeah, with no prompting, with no prompting, I might add. So that's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, thank you. And I I think that right now, here's what's really interesting is that for so long, we were so busy. We had gotten ourselves in here, especially in the United States versus Europe, where like they go on vacation for six weeks in the summer, right? They take naps at three o'clock in the afternoon. America is a much more uh, all year long, all day long work. And then you come home and you have life and family and, you know, taking care of ourselves. And then you have sleep. And then you want to have some enjoyment. And so we, we got ourselves so busy in all those categories, exercise, um, in all those categories that there wasn't a lot of time for introspection about when's the last time I thought about my core beliefs, whether it's about sex, life, relationships, work, the environment, the government, my, you know, my country, meaning, um, and, and where we we grow right we, when we were kids maybe we had a belief and then we get more experience and more information comes in and comes in and comes in and have we really sat down and said oh based on everything i've been through now what are my core beliefs 
And so when we, when we started Please Me, we really, before we even did anything, we did an exercise about what are our core beliefs because unless we knew that, then how could we address any problems that have come up? Well, does this, is this an alignment? Does this support? Will this facilitate? Will this help me get to the outcome that we want based on our core beliefs? So right. I think we can, we can do that in our lives. Right. We, I mean, it's, it was such a cool exercise and it really unified the team. We can do it with our spouses. We can do it with our families. We can do it with our um, loved ones. Right. And Definitely. Um, right now, I think we need to do it for our country as well. You know. Yeah. It would be very illuminating for people to do that. Mm-hmm. Because I agree with you. It's, it's not something that people just sit down and think about and do. Mm-hmm. But and and. I mean, if you ask the majority of people, I, I don't think most of us would just know off the top of our heads. Mm-hmm. But it's interesting. Interesting. Need, mm-hmm. need a little worksheet like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> interesting. So now I had you on last, I looked it up and it was last, the middle of last June, right? When y'all were just yeah. just starting to open things up and get get please me online, so mm-hmm. for people who might not have heard our first interview, do you want to tell them a little bit about please me and what what it is? Yes, of course. Yes, that would probably help people understand. Right? <laughs> just yeah, just don't so, make people not, might not have heard the first one. <laughs> for sure. Um, I'm going to tell you who Please Me is first, and then I'm going to tell you what it is. Okay. Um, and so who it is is a collective consciousness. It's a people with a collective consciousness that believe that people with passion can change the way the world relates to sex sexuality, and sexual-related involvement in life. So meaning, especially in this country, there's been years and years of uh, inequality in the sex arena. Men have a different um, re- the way they are received about sex is very different as the way women are received about as it pertains to sex. Um, and then there's also just a lot of times differing religious beliefs. And then we get back down to that, what is our core values, our core beliefs about our sex and sexuality and that part of our life. And so it's really people come to please me who are like, yes, this is an area I know is important. This is an area I'd like to see improve. This is an area I enjoy. And this is an area that empowers my life. And I want to take that area and give it the most tools, resources, and support as possible. And it's also a private area of our life. And so we really worked hard to create a place that was safe, meaning we still got to keep the intimacy of our um, experience private, right? But we get to talk about it actually now in an anonymous environment where we can ask those questions without it getting cancel cultured because my identity is known on Facebook and I can't say, hey, I've been thinking about a threesome. Anybody out there done one before? Well, my mother's going to see it. My son's going to see it. You know, like everybody I went to high school. (laughs) How many people need to know my personal questions and choices? So we realized that was part of what was keeping sex so taboo and so out of uh, touch with resources, right? Who do you talk to about it? Where do you talk to about it? But yet, here it does drive so many of our behaviors and our, our success rates, right? Whether it's relationship or work, it's you know, kind of the same thing. And so we really believe this, this collective consciousness that together we can empower lives to propel the movement to elevate sexual discourse to a topic for global consumption, right? And then utilize the profitability from that to help fight non-consensual sex crimes against humanity, and so I say that because, you know, there's, there's always sides, right? Meaning you can be very, very liberal and open and welcoming about sex, and then you can be very, very religious and have very limited beliefs about expressing or exploring your, social, your sexuality. And a lot of those really religious um, companies are working very hard to end sex 
slavery because it's very much against their core values for children to be violated. And then there's people that are very open about sexuality that are like, we're getting shut down because of FOSTA-SESTA and sex trafficking laws. Meanwhile, we're providing valuable services. So how is it that you're supporting us and you're supporting them at the same time? As please me. I'm like, well, our core values are very clear. We get to talk about this and we get to stop that. We get to figure it out. And so we just believe that the people with those types of values will be attracted to the platform and realize that both can exist, right? And um, everybody has their sexuality and their right to it. And we still get to save children from abuse. True. Yeah. Well, you know, we, we talked about this on the show last week, that your sexual energy is actually a part of your real life force, okay? Mm-hmm. So, and, and I, I personally discovered something really fascinating. And you probably know this, but I'm going to share it for the people that didn't hear that show, and it'll benefit them. Well, and, and let, me, let me say, too, that your sexual energy is very tied to your creativity, okay? Yeah. Which I, I just think is fascinating and very beneficial. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, and, and I'm not saying that you go have sex and you become creative, which actually that does work, but just... Especially just, if you get pregnant, because guess what you just created? A this life. Is true. This is true. Because you know, that's why sex ignites our creativity, because it literally creates life. Exactly. Well, mm-hmm. and, and like I said, it, well, and, and the thing is, it's the, the act of having sex, but also when, when you're comfortable with your sexuality, and I don't mean you, you got to be putting it out there for everybody, but just being comfortable with your sexuality. And you can, you can tell when a person is comfortable with their sexuality and when mm-hmm. they're just uncomfortable with their sexuality. Okay, yeah, and and it comes across a lot of times with with confidence that we have, you know, and you you can tell when a person's confident, okay, and you can tell when they're not confident, and and I when okay, I grew up in a very repressed household when it came to any anything, and I do mean anything having to do with sexuality, okay. Mm-hmm. It, it was it was ridiculous. Okay, yeah. when I when I started studying to become a love coach, okay, and I started realizing that, you know, it's it's not evil to learn this stuff. My yeah. my whole mentality started to change, okay, mm-hmm. and I started to open up about my thinking, and and it it was amazing how different I started to feel and how much. Just, just how overall different I started to feel, and how much more positive, and and all this sort of thing, and how my outlook started to change, and the the differences were just unbelievable in in all facets of my life. Okay, mm-hmm. and it it didn't have to be major differences in really anything other than my thinking and what I was learning. But attitude differences, thinking differences, emotionally, all these sorts of things. And it was just, I was giving myself permission to think and consider and learn a Something whole outside of that subject which you were taught. and feeling okay about it. Yeah, and I and when I got to the point where I stopped judging myself mm. for this stuff, mm-hmm. it was unreal, you know. So even even that kind of a step makes a huge difference, for sure. you know. So it's it's not that you have to start start dressing differently and you have to go out and start having an affair or start having threesomes or start, you know, being a dominatrix to, to see a difference and have a change in your life. Just right. just start thinking and learning and opening your mind and saying, I don't know if I want to do any of these things. 
but I just want to start understanding more. Even even understanding more about your body and how it works can make 100%. a difference. You know, yeah. even even this sort of thing. You know, and, and there's so many topics that I cover on my show. And I tell people, I said, you may never ever want to do this, but knowledge is power. So mm -hmm. even just understanding some of the options that are out there can make a huge difference. That's what I mean. That's what I mean when I say that. And this is right. the kind of thing you can do on Please Me. Because oh, you yeah. take a little quiz at the beginning, okay, and it, it figures out what your sex sign is and tell mm -hmm. and, and clear straighten me out if I'm wrong. <laughs> so, yeah, you're you're right on you know. so far. Keep going. <laughs> okay. And then and then it figures out which which world you're supposed to be in. And then mm -hmm. your your feed, okay, is going to give you things that are targeted to that interest. Okay. And then right. if you want to venture out and learn other things that are more complex, more intricate, you know, maybe out of your comfort zone, you can choose to do that. But if you don't want to and say you don't want to know about BDSM or kink, you don't you don't venture over there. Okay. You don't go look at that stuff. You stay right. where you're comfortable and that's the kind of people you talk to. So it's For it's sure. fascinating the way they've done this. Okay, yeah, and it's important, it's <laughs> important to know that one of the reasons why we did that is, you know, when you think about privacy and data and everything that's going on and what we're learning more and more about every day, that every move we make, every search we've taken gets assigned to our um, identity. Uh, right. Believe me, we, we don't take people's identity, meaning we don't ask them who they are and their address and their phone number. If you buy something from the shop, that's a separate website that just goes through you know, uh, merchant account services with all your data, you know, PII being protected because that's all bank, you know, related. But on Please Me, it's a username and a password, and you get an ID number, right? So we use, like, HIPAA information, you know, policies, if you will, as it pertains to the data. So when you go to that world, the reason we know what you want is because you answered a few questions, and that determined your world, and everyone in the world has that. Right? So it's not like this targeted, right now we don't use AI, but even when we do, we're building some machine learning and AI in so that we um, have your feed have more stuff that is of interest to you, but it's because you selected it and it's not tied to your name, address, and phone number. It's tied to a number so that we can do clinical research that's like de-identified data and really learn about sex and intimacy, but not you. Does that make sense? We're not doing yeah. this, you know, to pigeonhole people and keep their data. But they need to understand that we, we have a great data policy because we don't take your data. <laughs> and that starts with your name. Um, right. And so, um, but, but yes, and that's so true. They will be able to see what it is that, that is of interest to them. And if they don't want to make friends or make comments, it can be in voyeur mode and just go in and learn. Right, so right. you can have as much interaction or as little as you want, and it operates a lot um, most similarly to like a Facebook, um, you know, functionality. So people are pretty pretty used to seeing a feed and you know following people, following business pages that we call them channels. Um, right, having a chat and going in a topic room. If you're really passionate about a topic. Um, I think you mentioned, um, or I, on the last call, somebody was mentioning a transgender person who was going through the change and a lot of things that they had coming up for them, and it's a really inspiring story. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, imagine if they could all go in there and chat about that topic with each other. Wouldn't that be nice? Anonymously, because, you know, one of the things she brought up was that they really get attacked on social media and they they feel horrible, and it's really like a way that people just, judge them and attack them socially. So here it's private. You know, it's, it's not their pictures. It's their way to connect with others and ask questions that keeps their identity private. So that while they're learning, while they're exploring, I mean, it's, it's one thing to be like, hey, I am the dominatrix, number one dominatrix in the United States, and I'm just so happy to tell everybody about BDSM. But if you're just like, hey, I'm kind of curious about being spanked, but I don't really know how I'm going to feel about it yet. Do you really right. want everybody to know you're in the middle of that evaluation? I mean, wouldn't you like to be able to at least say, oh, no, I like spanking, and I'm okay to say it. But you don't even right. know that yet, right? right, when you're learning. So it allows people to develop 
what are my likes, and then how do I communicate them to a partner and those who I would like to communicate them to. And I get to decide who. That's part of consent. I should say, this person is worthy of knowing my private intimate information, to your point earlier, because you have to trust that person. Right. Right? Very true. So, well, yeah, I've that's seen... really cool about the site, I think, is that really private piece and safe place. Really well, I've seen so many people, too, comment that they appreciate being anonymous. They really mm-hmm. like that feature, you know. And like I said, I, I like, too, that the individual person chooses what they're interested in and that's the kind of information that they get. You know, mm-hmm. un- unlike Facebook where once once you friend somebody, whatever mm-hmm. they just know to talk about, you're, you're deluge with, you know. Um, mm-hmm. But, I mean, it's it's incredibly rare that something pops up on, on my feed on, on Please Me that I don't say, ooh, that's interesting, you know. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, and that's what we're saying. And, you know, what's interesting about that, and I think this is another – a uh, real differentiator is that members that friend other members, um, they can't post uh, images. They can post giffies. They, they can post status updates being words. But because of FOSTA, SESTA, and us wanting to make sure there's no child pornography or sex trafficking going on, and due to the an- anonymity, we don't let members post images. This is not let me show you my grandkids. You're anonymous, first of all. Why would you want to show an image? right? <laughs> You're blowing your cover. So we gave users a photo vault, a private photo vault. If they decide they want to share their pictures with somebody, they can grant them access. But in the feed, one of the reasons you don't see a bunch of stuff you don't want is because the members really can only chat inside the feed and follow other content and comment on it, right? That's being okay. kind of, you know, put out by channels, which we know are viable brands and thought leaders with a business and we check their websites and social to make sure, okay, this is a legitimate company. They've been doing this for X amount of years and we have to make sure they're not child trafficking or putting out pornography, right? So those are two things that absolutely cannot exist on this site or we all have problems. That's not a judgment. Well, it is on sex trafficking. It's a huge judgment Um, and child (laughs) pornography. But as it relates to prostitution, some countries it's legal. Some people feel it should be legal here. Unfortunately, we're held by the laws in this country right now. Whether we agree with either side, we have to agree with the law or the platform comes down. So we make sure there's no prostitution, selling of sexual services. Um, and that's one of the ways we do that is we know who our brands are, we know who our channels are, and um, the members really can't you know, get by us with images and, and videos of the wrong things. Right. Interesting. Well, I, I don't have like a personal account. I just have my channel. So I'm, I'm yeah. not familiar with what all you can do with the personal account. I'll set one of those up one of these days. Oh, just, yeah, um, you must do that. It's so much fun. Because even though you talk about sex all the time, you may have a question that you'd like to ask <laughs> if you don't really want to ask somebody either. I know I do. <laughs> I know, I know. Interesting. I got some sexy values that need exploring. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't we all? <laughs> so, uh, speaking, yeah. speaking of channels, what kind yeah. of um, individuals, businesses, whatever, are you looking for for channels? I mean, really... Everything and anything that supports sex and sexuality, and I say that because there's so much, right? There's just so much. And then when the channel comes in, you know, we review it and make sure that it's, again, meeting guidelines. But models, meaning there's a lot of fetish models who take beautiful pictures in the latex and everybody just out from all over the world, Um, artists, uh, musicians, thought leaders, educators, educators. therapists, brands that make sex toys and pleasure products, uh, relationship counselors, dating advice, um, sex and sexuality, gender, LGBTQ. um, There's just a swinging polyamory. I mean, there's so many different apps that support technology and science that support cannabis in the sex space. Um, We've got things just all uh, erotic writers, 
um, producers. So we don't have any porn on our site, but like there's companies who are producers of porn and they have their website and they explain like we have in there's one that's indie women's women friendly porn because a lot of women there's a lot of porn they really don't like to watch. And so they did a lot of research to find out what do women like when they want some visual stimulation for their masturbation. It's very arty and indie and high end and so you can learn about it and they and then click off and go to their site if you want. Um, but we don't have any porn rolling, in, you know, like there's nowhere to come watch it. But I think that's worth noting because a lot of people have very strong feelings about porn. Um, right. And whether you have it one way or another, it, it's just this isn't, wasn't built for that. There's so many tube sites and porn sites out there that wasn't our, our goal. Our goal was to solve the social problem, you know. Right. Um, for the industry and for us as individuals. So it's not a judgment. It's just that's, that's the functionality um, and, and where it is with that. But really, everyone and anyone, the Esther Perels of the world, the Matthew Hussies, the, um, anyone that can really support intimate needs, you know. We have a lot of companies that come on about the vaginal biome and understanding aging and, and keeping virility and your um, desire levels up as you age and, you know, learning how to be a better lover. I mean, a lot of us, especially you and I, Nikki, sexually repressed, as, you know, we talked about in the last interview, we both came from that same background. You know, when I finally did start quote unquote researching, I was 37 years old and, you know, you go be with a new partner because I was single and it's like you feel like a 22 year old child in your skill level. You know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah. And so I wasn't too shy to say, hey, how do you give a good blowjob? I'd really like to know because I was molested at five and I stayed away from that for many, many years because I had a trauma around it until I finally said, nope, not letting that run my life anymore. But, you know, there's a lot of education there, too, um, just about how the body works and orgasms and different, you know, ways to achieve them. And women, I mean, I don't know if you know this, but there's like 100 different types of orgasms for us. Are you aware of this? There are a lot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think I've experienced two. I'd like to go at least 10. That'd be nice. And I mean different types. <laughs> Not numbers of, you know, different types of <laughs> orgasms women have, you know. Uh, so, yeah. Lots of exploring left to do. <laughs> totally. And you know what's also really cool? I've been noticing and realizing, like, things... I, I had a hard time orgasming from vaginal sex alone. I needed dual stimulation. When I was building the site, I found out 65% of women have that same experience as me. I thought I was weird and broken and there was something wrong with me. I just didn't work, maybe because of my religion and all that. No, no, no. Physiologically, 65% of women have this issue. And maybe there's some mental beliefs that are built into that too, but some of it is just anatomy. Yeah. Well, sometimes. Oh no. Try try different positions. Lots of possible oh, positions. Right. But my point being much more difficult. Right? Not without a whole bunch of twists and turns. Like some women, I have a friend, she can have sex and she's squirting within like I mean she it's a problem for her. She's like, I think it freaks men out because I literally squirt during intercourse. At a, you know, at a certain age, it just started happening to me, and I almost can't stop it. Meanwhile, I'm like, oh, my Lord, I wish. Like, I, <laughs> yeah. I need a lot of work to get a squirt out of me, you know, whereas some women, you know, just to where their clit is in retrospect to their spongy spot inside of them that's a little more sensitive, close to the clitoral, you know, all of our bodies are different, you know. Yeah. Well, and each each person is a little bit different on how they react and all that sort of thing. So it just, I don't know, the body, body is interesting. It's just interesting. Yeah, <laughs> and it brought me, it brought me some, my point being, it brought me some uh, self-acceptance that, wow, yeah. I'm not weird. I'm not the only one. I, it's not like uh, I'm the one woman in America that's having such a difficult time orgasming from vaginal sex. Like, okay. It kind of really made me feel like, take a deep breath. It's okay. We'll just work on it a little bit more in different ways. Um, But, yeah, that was kind of 
a big thing for me, realizing that. I, I didn't realize how much that was bothering me. Practice, practice, practice. <laughs> and it's fun. <laughs> well, you know, I, I did the, the very same day that I did an interview with ABC.com about the G-Spot. I saw, this is way back when I, I could still stay in the show. Um, I, I also watched The View, and they did an interview with a doctor that was talking about the G-Spot. And all the women on there that day swore there was no such thing. I was thinking, mm. you all are sad. <laughs> you know? They're all arguing with the doctor that there was no such thing. It's like, okay, you all are just sad. All of you. you know? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but, and I think but, that they were trying to say, I don't orgasm from vaginal sex. Uh, that, you know what I'm saying? In their mind, it can't exist because I don't orgasm that way. I yeah. know. It's like, y'all need to play a little bit more. <laughs> so. Well, it's so true. It's so true. And I will say now, I, you know, I have orgasms all the time, but. I also didn't masturbate back then because I thought it was wrong based on my religion. So to yep. your point, I had no clue what made me feel good, you know? Yeah. Um, well, and, and I talk about that on here. You know, if, if you don't personally know what feels good to you, mm -hmm. you can't communicate that to your partner, you know? Yeah. And so if you experiment, find out what feels good, you can communicate to your partner and I have yet to find a guy that doesn't enjoy having you tell him or show him what you enjoy. I, yeah, seriously. Sure. Yeah. So just just a thought. Just a thought. Yeah, and I can even tell you that when you don't communicate because you don't know, right, there's yep. a huge feeling of inadequacy because you're, like, frustrated. I'm not getting pleasure. I don't know how to express myself. I can't tell them that I think there's something wrong with me because I don't know what makes my body feel good. And then there's like all this anxiety that happens inside while you're at sex. Am I going to have an orgasm? Can I have an orgasm? How can I, oh, I can't get an orgasm. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to express myself. And then you just fake it. Yeah. Or get out of the situation. Or, or some women <laughs> I mean, I'm think, serious. Yeah or, yeah, or some women think they've had one and they haven't. Right. And then they accidentally have one to go holy crap what was that <laughs> you know? that's what i've been missing yeah 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 or, or think something's wrong and, and it, it really wasn't it, it's it's something really really good and they're like you know so yeah you know it's, but yeah i i i can relate to the whole masturbation bad thing so yeah mm -hmm. yeah but yeah trying trying to help help well, and I mean, even if you look at my about page, helping helping the women that grew up with that whole repressed thing, and and you know all all of that, and and to be even even just to have not to have a crazy sex life, but just to have a healthy sex life and a healthy 100%. mentality about sexuality is is just I mean that's that's a passion for me. You know, and because yeah. I, I know what a difference it can make just just in your life itself and then in a relationship, too. And and just to want to help people to to be able to overcome that. I mean, that is so that's so important to me. It just is, you know. That's that's what sparked the idea of my Love, Accept, and Respect Yourself program, and that's what got me to initially start the radio program. Because I just wow. really, really, because well, and and well, in the anonymity of the radio show, because mm -hmm. nobody has to actually go face to face and ask for help, you know. Yep. They don't have to go to somebody and ask for help. They can just click on it and listen to it in the privacy mm -hmm. of their own home and get the information without ever having to go and admit. Because I, I, I wouldn't have gone to somebody pri publicly and admitted what, what I'd gone through for years and how bad and the shame and guilt and all that stuff that I felt. I know I wouldn't yeah. have. I never did. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Me neither. Me neither. So, see? You understand? Yeah. I totally get it. And, you know, I, you made a comment earlier about you don't have to run out and become 
you know, a BDSM queen or, you know, have sex all the time. That's called rebelling, right? Yeah. That would be like, yeah. I want to rebel like a child because I've been repressed for so long. And do people rebel sexually because they feel repressed? They finally got out of an oppressive situation? Perhaps. Another time that can happen is when they've been abused and they're like, a lot of people that have been sexually violated then become very promiscuous for a while. It's a very odd, you know, psychological correlation that they've done in research to find. And that happened to me when I was a kid. I lost my virginity in a blackout drinking situation. And after that, I was like, well, fuck it. My vir- oh, can I say that? My vir- well, you just did. <laughs> well, I just yeah. did. You know, my virginity is gone now. I might as well just, who cares? You know, I kind of had that uh, mentality. And for a year, and you know, I was drinking because I couldn't deal with what happened and then more promiscuous, you know, and it was like a rebelling, right? And so just because we go look at our sex and sexuality doesn't mean we have to go rebel. Like this is a healthy, proactive thing that you're talking about. And we get to do that too. We get to do that too. Well, that's it. I I, I think too many people, especially when you grow up in in that repressed thing, you, and you've got that, that guilt and that shame heaped on you for so long, you, you get mm-hmm. that all-or-nothing mentality. You yeah. know, you, you don't realize you can, you can have a healthy sexuality. Mm-hmm. You, you, some, sometimes, not everybody, but sometimes along with that repressed mentality comes the, I, I either have to have nothing or I have to go crazy. Right. And, and it's not so like that. Yeah, you don't yeah. have to do that. You can yeah. have a sex, a healthy sexuality, and you can have a healthy re- relationship, and you can you can feel comfortable with your own body. And I, I got to tell you this: when when I turned forty because of my mom's health history, I I went and had my first mammogram. Okay, mm-hmm. and and I mm-hmm. I was still kind of dealing with the whole repressed hoopla at that point and mm. and so i i went and in the first time i went in they they made me go through the x-rays and then went back in for x-rays and the ultrasound and and biopsy and, and the whole nine yards i mean it was it was not the not the way to do your first one so so i i got very protective of of my chest at this point and very protective of of my breast at that point because you know yeah. that was very traumatic was the first mm-hmm. the first time so it was funny after they did all that i i I remember, this this is so goofy. I feel so, so goofy with this. So the the next day after they did all those tests, and um, I was walking out to the mailbox, and I went to walk out my door, and and I looked down at my chest, and I literally crossed my arms over my chest to protect my 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 boobs. Wow. <laughs> you know, I'd never done that yeah. in my life. But but after sure. all that, I felt very very protective of my body, you know. After because mm-hmm. I mean that scares the daylights out of you when you have all that done and you're waiting for the test results and the biopsy results and all that kind of thing, you know. Yeah, you know. But I was, super I was conscious. well, I was I was aware of my body in a way I hadn't been before that, you know, because mm-hmm. I I hadn't let myself think that intimately about any mm. any part of my body that you can think about sexually. You know, right? Because that's evil. That's evil. Mm-hmm. But but when you start thinking about the potential of cancer and and all that, I, screw all that repressed crap. You know. Yeah. But um. But yeah, I, I think about that every once in a while, and I was I was very protective. Get away. Get away. <laughs> oh. Yeah. And don't touch yeah. my boobies. <laughs> that's right. But yeah, especially after the whole like laying down and, and hanging through the table. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so some man drilled into my boobies. That hurt. <laughs> you know. Yeah, but you know, it's um but yeah, it just like I said, it's it's very much a labor of love trying to to help other people because I, I very literally know what what they're feeling and what they're going through. So mm-hmm. where do you feel that Please Me fits into the world and trying to help people? Well, we don't try. We do. Okay. Does. Okay. <laughs> I like good answer. <laughs> I lo- I've lost that word from my va- vocabulary unless I'm trying a new piece of uh, equipment or food or something for the first time or trying a sexual activity for the first time. But when it comes to what we're accomplishing, we keep going until we get 
you know, that core belief and that mission accomplished. And so where I see it fitting in is, one of the goals is to increase the world's happiness quotient. And um, I recently interviewed a sexologist, and he said, saving love one orgasm at a time. And Ooh. so I think that works perfectly if you just put those two missions together, you know, increasing the world's happiness quotient by saving love one orgasm at a time. And, and I make it that simple, but when you have an orgasm, it's because you have usually you know, either you're very comfortable with your body and you're okay with your decision and you're with somebody that you trust enough to open up your body and you've now enjoyed the moment long enough to fully capitulate, right? Right. And so, so there is a lot of truth in that. That is in the outcome of doing the work and doing the exploration and doing the self-care and understanding your body and then, you know, being able to have healthy relationships and extend your boundaries and learn what you like and communicate them. Bingo, bango, saving love one orgasm at a time. And that's Stephen Smith's slogan. So I'm going to give him props, uh, sexologist. <laughs> but we also feel that when that happens, it increases a person's happiness quotient. And um, if we can keep creating everyone's happiness quotient to raise, you know, as a planet and as a vibrational group of people, then how many people do you know that are really happy just had an orgasm that said, let's go out and start a war? You know, I, I just I just feel like, you know, it's the anger and the disappointment and I, the need for control and all those things that tend to bring us in the wrong direction. So if we can raise those vibrations to things like love and uh, acceptance and joy and compassion versus anger, fear, jealousy, you know. Um, and that starts at home. It starts within. It starts in that closest personal relationship you have, and then it trickles out into your work relationships and your social relationships. So that's our mission, is to give people the tools to take this area of their life and have it ripple out in a positive manner. Awesome. I like that. What are you currently donating your resources to and why those things? Yeah, I mean, it's very simple for me. Um, abuse uh, begets abuse, usually. It's a lot of the times, abused people, whether it's physically, emotionally, or sexually, um, without some kind of an intervention and a healing and um, and a being able to protect themselves and or create boundaries, um, they'll end up learning that behavior and repeating it. And so in providing that tool for us to heal, like I needed to heal from, from a couple of different non-consensual sex traumas, um, we can help end that abuse cycle and get people to a place where they can have that improvement. And if we're doing all those things and we're raising money by raising awareness and helping, then what else good can we do? And let's find a way to fight the non-consensual sex crimes and stop and, and save those who are being affected and get them healing modalities and also stop the people who are perpetrating those um, non-consensual crimes. And not that they can't get help too, but, you know, you need to still be accountable for the crime that you committed, right? Get help in prison then. <laughs> yeah, Sorry. You, you know, um, if you're going to be out there do repeating this, then you need to be in a place where you can't do that. Um, and then find some intervention for them, maybe in a prison situation, right? And everyone's made mistakes and no one is beyond help, right? But let me least get to the people who say, I want this area of my life to be good. I want to heal what I've got going on and, you know, teach my children healthy. And then what can we do to help those who are less fortunate than us? And so for us, that's child sex trafficking. And we donate 10% of the funds to a great organization that is boots on the ground going into governments and helping law enforcement agencies and get the tools they need to make those uh, to find the rings, to uh, take down the offenders and to properly prosecute them via, you know, traveling labs, for example. They need to get semen samples on, you know, they need to get this stuff done right so the person can go to jail. 
Um, right. And so they do that. And then they, when they get the kids out, they, they don't take kids out until they've set up the aftercare situation. They know how many, roughly how many kids are in each situation from Intel, and they pre-plan where they're going to take them after they have family, if they know any of the kids' names. And then when they get out, they go through the process of, do they have a family? Is the family part of the problem? Where can these kids go to be safe and get healed? And so that was really important for me, um, finding an organization that not just talking about it, but physically doing it and helping the children. And so that's why we chose OUR Rescue. And Tim Ballard is the CEO and founder, and he was a forward. uh, He was previously in the military in the ICE department fighting sex trafficking um, from a uh, legal perspective and from a, um, what's it called, law enforcement perspective. So he has all that knowledge, and he's built an amazing team, and you can, you can Google it and go to YouTube and watch some amazing you know, messages of, I think they've saved over like 3,200 children now and put over 2,100 offenders or arrested over 2,100 offenders. So they're just doing really great work, and we want to help them get more kids out of there Um, and more importantly, stop these rings, you know, and, and, and the cycle because it's the third fastest criminal growing criminal enterprise in the world. And there's more children sold than there are drugs. And that's because you can sell a child over and over again. A drug you can sell once and you have to manufacture it and they're more valuable. They cost more, you know, so um, there's that word value again. And so that's really where, and there's going to be a lot of other charities. We're looking for more charities. To your point of who's a good channel, anyone doing amazing work in this space, whether they're helping rape victims or ab- women who are, or men who are in abusive relationships get out. And um, there's so much people that are helping trans people. There's plenty and plenty of great nonprofits who are doing amazing work. And please me, will Share the message. We don't charge. You know, come on over. Build your channel. Talk about what you're doing. We need to give people hope and let them know. We actually have a whole channel dedicated to that. It's called um, The Naked Truth, and that's where we share inspiring stories of what people are out there doing to help others in this sexual uh, space. And um, and so, yeah, we're excited about that. Awesome. Not that we have to be doing it because it sucks that we have to be doing it, that it's even going on, but we're, we're excited that we have an opportunity to, you know, make a change. True. Well, I just figured that I'd, I'd let you kind of mention some of the, the things because, you know, there, there could be people listening that should have a channel with you. So I just oh, thought, yeah. I'm gonna, you know, put, put that out there. <laughs> Come on board. We'd love to have you. There, there's just some things that are really obvious, and I thought there might be some other things that aren't so obvious. No, and, that was and, a great question, and thank you for asking it, because it, it's good for people to know where, where they can come. It's very censored out there right now. It, it's, I know you and I have talked about this on Facebook as friends, that um, especially our industry, and I'm sure you've been experiencing this, um, everything's getting taken down, shut down, uh, deleted, shadow banned, Facebook jail, people are losing their whole businesses. And it's only gotten worse and worse and worse since January of 2001, I'll just put it that way. And it was bad before. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, while they're censoring healthy sexuality talk, they're celebrating sexualizing children on Netflix shows like Little Cuties, or was was it Cuties? And then the little yeah. dolls they're selling to kids where you put them in the water and they, they come out with sexualized clothing. This, these are toys for tots. Like, what are, we, yeah. what are we allowing and what are we censoring? You know, it's, it's really off balance right now, and we have to ask ourselves, why is that? Yeah, there's, there's no consistency in, in what's being banned. So, yeah. Okay. Well, there's no consistently banning sexual content of any kind you know, on social media, but then in traditional media and in manufacturing and in entertainment, we see a whole different story. Well, and, and there's, there's, doesn't seem to be oversight in 
what's being purchased. Because if you actually look at the box for those those dolls you were talking about, it very clearly says what they do. But you have to actually read the box before you buy them. But why are they selling? Let's even get past that. I mean, a lot of women didn't read the box, so they were shocked and didn't realize they were buying it. And, you know, I, yeah. I mean, who would think to their defense that a toy for a three-year-old, four-year-old child would be sexualized? Why would you even consider? And then they became a craze, not because three- and four-year-olds realized they had fishnet stockings on. They don't know the difference. They like the little cute size in the face. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, why did they become so popular? Not because they were sexualized. When women finally realized, because it's cold, it was cold water, right? So if they throw it in the bath, they don't see it. It's hot water. But yeah. what if a kid's playing in some cold water? Like, why would you want that to be a peekaboo thing? You know, I don't know. Why would you want it anyway? I is the bigger know. question. Well, and it's by the same manufacturer that did the Bratz toys, right, that were such an issue with some people. Mm. Mm-hmm. But those were a little more for teens, and even that was sexualizing for 13-year-olds, but now we're doing it for four-year-olds, three-year-olds? Yeah, well, they, they made money with one. They figured they'd strike a little younger, mm. start, start them earlier, make, make money earlier, and then, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, what, you got to wonder who thought that was a good idea. Well, and well, the the company seems to have zero remorse, and so they've been doing it for decades, and they're going to keep on doing it. They they seem really? quite proud of themselves. Yep. Hmm. I, I did. I'd like to see. I'd reason. like to see how their sales have been affected since it's come out in mainstream, because I would be willing to bet they dropped significantly. Hmm. Hmm. That'd be interesting. I'm going to check on that. <laughs> well, let me know what you find <laughs> because like you I like to research and find out and you know yeah I do too mm-hmm. well, like I said let, let me know what you find <laughs> I will for sure you'll be the first one I, I, I reach out to well I tell you what I am going to um, on the on the show page I'm going to put um a set of links for Heather and for for various things that please me. I am going to share a link for anyone who would like to uh, create an account. And I believe that gives you a VIP account for a short time. Is that true? Three three months, actually, yeah. Three months. Okay. So beside where it says join today, if you use that link, it'll give you a, a VIP account for three months. I've got a link to a couple of videos that'll kind of introduce you to, to please me and let you give you a little t- taste of what what all it offers. And I'm also going to give you links to a couple of articles that'll give you some of the the details of the site also. So if you go to my website <clears throat> to readyforloveradio.com/sexyvalues. You'll get all that information and a replay of today's show. So, Heather, as always, I enjoyed having you with me today. Oh, Nikki, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to chat chat with you. Uh, And we can always find something to talk about. (laughs) Totally. And listeners, I'll be with you next time on Ready for Love Radio.